Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. And if no one has said thank you to you today for all of your efforts, let me say thank you. Thank you for what you do to get through this test, to study, to become an excellent clinician. It's something that again will benefit not just you, but your patients for many years to come. And thank you for the efforts you put into that. So as you know, in this podcast, we go through the FSBPT content outline. Today is no different. We'll be talking through the second largest system on the exam, the neuromuscular and nervous system. We'll be talking through a practice question specifically related to the interventions section on the exam. But before we do, just a quick reminder that we will be starting up our PT crash course. This will be the first week of July we'll be starting that up where we have both synchronous and asynchronous content to get you through exam day. Now, as you know, cramming is something that doesn't particularly work. In fact, there are studies showing that cramming can actually be detrimental, meaning that you're cramming the night before the test, trying to to get every last bit of information to your head in a very high stress and low time scenario. So what I like to do instead of that is to do what I call the crash course. So the crash course starts three weeks before every test day, and it's meant to go through the content that is the most pertinent to the NPTE. And I've had many, many hundreds and hundreds of students who have sent me messages after the crash course to say, hey, I'm so glad you reviewed that content. It was so helpful on test day because there was XYZ number of questions about whatever topic it was. It was extremely helpful. I like to think of it as like when you were an undergraduate, do you remember you had, or even in PT school, like you'd have a TA that would try to talk to you the night before the test or a couple of days before the test and say, hey, I, I know what you need to study because this is likely to be tested. So that's the experience you'll have on the crash course, the content that is likely to be tested, very easily tested and frequently tested. That type of material is what we like to go over. Again, it tends to get people, every session we have is really meant to get you another handful of questions correct on test day. It's extremely helpful as you're trying to go through those last few weeks of study, not only to number one, keep you motivated, but number two, keep you on track for a successful attempt on the NPTE. So the way the crash course will work is that we have one session weekly for the three weeks, so three live sessions dedicated to practice questions where we go through just a whole slew of practice questions, talking through not only the content contained therein, but how to answer them. In addition to that, you have access to our previously recorded material that takes you through the key content in the big three systems, cardio, muscular, and neuro. And it really is meant to be a very quick and succinct review of the big systems. So about 75% of the test is contained in the cardio, muscular, and neuro sections. And so we try to review the most important concepts contained therein. So all things considered, it is the best bang for your buck you'll find anywhere when it comes to NPT prep extremely economical, especially if you can get your cohort or a group of five or more students together. You, it's There's still time if, as you're listening to this now, if you are able to get your cohort together, you can get a very sweet discount on the PT crash course. Be sure to check that out. We also have a PTA crash course if you're targeting the PTA exam. Uh, just remember that we start these crash courses three weeks before every test day. You're welcome to sign up whenever you wish. And uh, the target is to get you all the way right up until test day leads you right across the finish line. Plus, we always end up adding a few bonus features and it's something you won't want to miss. So be sure to check that out. ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to get on the list. Make sure that you are up to date with all the information you need in order to dominate on test day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go through our practice question. This is related to the neuromuscular and nervous system interventions. Remember, this is the second largest system on the exam with somewhere around 50 questions related to the neuro system. So here you go. Here is your question. As per our usual, I'll read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it. A patient with multiple sclerosis is receiving physical therapy intervention for strength and conditioning. During examination, the physical therapist notes the following impairments, tactile slash proprioceptive losses, incoordination, and tremors. Which of the following strength training equipment would be least appropriate for this patient? So a patient with multiple sclerosis receiving physical therapy intervention for strength and conditioning. During examination, the physical therapist notes the following impairments. Tactile slash proprioceptive losses, incoordination, and tremors. Which of the following strength training equipment would be least appropriate for the patient? One, arm slash leg ergometers. Two, free weights. Three, isokinetic machines. And four, weight machines. 
So we have arm leg ergometers, free weights, isokinetic machines, and weight machines. So the correct answer here is because of that poor coordination, it could be a danger to the patient, could be unsafe to the patient to have them handle free weights, meaning free weights that are like your classic dumbbells where you can have any, anywhere from very light weights to very heavy weights. But the point being that those, if you don't have coordination or you're likely to drop them, it could be in a, a dangerous situation for the patient. So in order to keep your patient safe, you'd prefer to use something that had more controlled movement. So this would be like an ergometer, like an arm bike or a leg bike. An isokinetic machine, also an example of a type of machine where they're not likely to injure or or damage themselves on the machine, as well as weight machines like a squat machine or some other type of pulley-assisted device. These things are much more likely to be safe for the patient, whereas the free weights, this would be a poor idea or ill-advised in the case that you had someone who had coordination or tactile proprioceptive losses, meaning they don't know where the weight is in space, and if they drop it on themselves or it's too heavy and it, it falls on their toe, that kind of a thing would be extremely deleterious to the patient. So you'd not, it, it would be ill-advised. We'll just put it that way. So the purpose or the, the content of this question is talking about how multiple sclerosis, one of the, one of the symptoms, I mean, there are certainly many symptoms and there's quite a variety of presentations for multiple sclerosis, but one of them would be poor coordination or in coordination and uh, tactile proprioceptive losses and tremors. So that being said, it is ill-advised for them to handle free weights. Other things to consider as far as your interventions for multiple sclerosis would be temperature control. These folks tend to fatigue very quickly, especially in hot environments or if they get overheated. So it'd be very, very important for you as a PT to make sure that the temperature is well controlled in the environment, either that or use surface cooling on the patient. So like, uh, what do they call it? The uh, the, t the towels, neck wraps, spray bottles, towels, things that you can put onto the patient for evaporative cooling. That can be very helpful in the case that a patient, that a patient is overheating. Other things to consider with multiple sclerosis is fatigue management. You want to avoid overexerting with these patients. And so therefore choosing times when they have the most energy, usually morning times on a very set routine is a, is a good idea just because they are less likely to overexert themselves, which again can be, it is contraindicated and can worsen the symptoms and, and actually exacerbate the multiple sclerosis. So therefore, of key consideration would be safety for the patient and then efficacy, so safe and effective treatment, which would include cool environments, morning interventions, and then avoiding, especially if they have coordination losses, avoiding free weights or anything that they could drop or, or injure themselves with. So all right, with that, we'll bring that to a conclusion. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you uh, want to check out all the other episodes, we've got a ton of other episodes. Also, please do us a favor, leave us a five-star review over on Google Play, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. And in the meantime, keep a grin on your chin as you study. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Will Crane fist pumps all around.